Hi guys, welcome to new video. So today we'll continue with the second mission of another campaign. And first again, I will again show you the uh, map that you can see here. And uh, in the first mission we are, f we are fighting here near the captain's base. And now we'll continue north uh, through this swamp. Uh, and in the first mission we'll eventually defend this uh, small village. But first we need to get through this swamp. So this will be the second mission. Let me just go to Armies of Exigo and start it. Uh, as you can see, we have two more players. So the captain's crew, uh, which is of course uh, the Captain Herald from last mission. Uh, and then there are the Slam Goblins, which will be our enemy. Uh, again, there will be just a small introduction, so let's listen to that. Then Sir Godfrey set out with his army to the north, where there was to be a defenseless village that had come under attack from the Swamp Goblins. Yeah, so this was just a really short introduction. And as you can see, we are uh, playing for the captain's base that we helped in the last mission. And that is also the Captain Herald, which will... and he will give us a really short dialogue here. Thank you for your help, Sir Godfrey. It's really good to see you again after all these years. Unfortunately, we don't have time for the rest. To the north lies a defenseless village plagued by goblins. Get your army there as quickly as you can. Yeah, so he's already teasing for the next mission that we will be defending that village. And here we also received a message uh, that if, I, if our hero dies, then he will revive here in 120 seconds. So it's not like uh, in the normal Armies of Exio campaign, where if you lose your hero, you just lose the whole mission. Here you can use the maximum value of your hero, and then he will just resurrect here in two minutes. So you don't need to worry about him dying anywhere. So this is really useful. Uh, also, we received a message that the maximum population in this mission is 90. So we will need to build some farms at least to increase our population, of course. Uh, we can also make a few more peasants here. Uh, actually, we don't need another peasant on gems and wood because uh, the main resource that we will need here uh, is just gold. So we don't need to worry about that. Let's just not waste any more population and resources on other peasants. I will just have six on gold, one on gems and one on wood. Uh, we also have blacksmith when we, where we have uh, one upgrade for each armor and damage for melee and trench units. So we can also upgrade that. And as you can see, we can create three baseline units uh, in barracks. So we can have swordsmen, crossbowmen, and pikemen. Uh, this is just a normal empire race, let's say. Uh, there are just some small adjustments like this, where you have crossbowmen instead of uh, elf rangers. Uh, yeah, as you can see, the description is here for uh, those upgrades the same. So you still have elf rangers. But, of course, it will apply to crossbowmen, so you don't need to worry about that. And, uh, actually, it's just the model for that unit, so it will look uh, like crossbowmen, but it will still have the same strength as Elf Ranger, so you don't need to worry about anything, this is just the normal Empire race. Uh, there will be some more restrictions in future missions, because uh, this small change is, uh, of course, because of the storyline, so uh, you are just playing as uh, humans, huh? so you don't have elves. Elf is another uh, race that you will meet in the campaign, but uh, of course there will be some more restrictions in the future with some other units, but right now the only change here is the visual of uh, your range unit here. As you can see, those are the exact stats of uh, elf rangers. So let's just keep creating some more swordsmen and crossbowmen. Uh, they will also have some boron riders, uh, those goblin uh, swamp goblins. But I don't think it's really worth it to create any pikemen. Yeah, we have some mercenary pikemen from the beginning, but uh, I don't think it's really worth it to make any more of them. Let's just keep creating more swordsmen and crossbowmen. 
My life is at your service. Yeah, also don't forget that you still have your hero that can summon the ancient knight of Enedor. So that's really strong unit that you can use uh, in the front line to tank some damage. So definitely utilize that uh, once we start attacking. And right now I'm just waiting for uh, our enemy to attack us first. And after that I will start exploring the map. Because once again there are many treasures that you can pick up across the map. And... Uh, of course, you can just uh, win it without it, uh, definitely. But if you want, you can just use this time when you are waiting for some resources and more units. You can use that to explore the map and uh, defeat those treasures, which is really useful. Uh, yeah, also, we have the captain's crew here, where there is the Captain Herald, we, uh, which can help us with defense a little bit. Also, there are some towers, so if our enemies decide to go around the walls, uh, then they will get killed by those, those towers and also all of those walls belong to our ally so uh, our enemy doesn't need to destroy them to kill us so we'll also be careful with that and right now i have quite a lot of resources so i can just spam even more units and also upgrade them and there are two uh, two towns or bases of our enemies so one is somewhere around here, uh, yeah, I think right here. Uh, this is just a smaller one, but uh, we can also create an expansion here. And then there is the second one, which is a little bit stronger and harder to defeat. But uh, we will already have that expansion at the time when we will be attacking the second town. So we'll have even more resources and more soldiers. As you can see, he's already attacking. You can see a quite a lot of soldiers, it's always most important to kill this goblin shaman because as you can see he has uh, really high damage, so he's almost one-shotting my units. But we are able to push through him really quickly and uh, right now we can just uh, regroup our army and start exploring the map. Of course there will be more attacks coming, but since he just attacked uh, we should have at least some time to explore. Uh, in this location there will be some enemies My that you need to defeat but there is also a healing fountain which My is really useful because you For can glory. just come here with your army uh, always between fights and heal your units. So first I will of course uh, defeat those enemies glory. that are really nearby. Yeah, here are some Varangis and also we will receive a healing dust here which we can heal for uh, healing our units in the fight. Yeah, uh, still keep in mind that if we lose our hero we will not lose the game, he will just resurrect us after two minutes. So that's also really good to keep in mind that we don't need to play like super defensively. So let's just keep My healing here and also uh, there is one more item that you can pick up here. It's a little bit uh, more tricky because uh, there is a huge Hydra here that will attack you if you get too close. So you want to ride like this and then there is the mighty Warangi but you can just go around him, pick up this item and go away. Because both of those uh, neutral units are really strong and you don't really want to fight them. But you can just pick up this amulet of uh, a water amulet, which will summon some Varangis in fight, which can really help you. So as you can see, my army is already fully healed. The only unit that we need to heal right now is the Sir Godfrey, so we'll just keep him there. Uh, yeah, this is the difference uh, against like Warcraft 3, let's say, where you always want to bring your heroes uh, with your army and use them to... Uh, I mean, kill enemies to upgrade those heroes, because they have levels and you can upgrade them and then have uh, stronger stats and also some new abilities. Uh, while here in Arms of Exigo you are actually leveling your units, while the hero is just uh, always the same strength, so you cannot uh, level up him. So it's actually more important to always have your units there and not just kill everything with your hero, because then you would be losing experience. So right now I don't need to worry about him uh, not being with my army, uh, I can just yes, take my army like this and yes, go sir. exploring without that hero. Also we'll create a super group and go this way.
because of course there is the first uh, enemy town so I definitely don't want to go through that but if you go uh, to this area you will actually find some more neutral enemies that are defending another item yeah so there is just uh, one warangi so we we'll kill him really quickly and here you can pick up a medicine plant yeah one more enemy let's just kill him really quickly and as you can see the medicine plant is really strong because it will fully restore the hp of any unit that you want so this is definitely something that we will utilize in the fight and it will just help us uh, fully heal sir, sir godfrey once he drops uh, really low so i don't have to wait for the resurrection or or like this for him to heal near this fountain i will just instantly heal him and also we have the healing dust, which is really useful because that will also help him a little bit to sustain that HP. Uh, we actually ran out of population, so let's make like two more farms. Yeah, it's a little bit harder to build here, but you can use this area if you run out, run out of space. Will the work never end? Actually, Will now I a little bit mess up, so let's do it again. Idea. And yeah, I believe we are... We are definitely ready for attack. I will just uh, make one more upgrade for armor for my swordsmen, and oh, let's not even wait for full HP. We can just attack like this. We have actually more than 15 melee units because I have one more swordsman here. So let's just add him to the group with our ranged units, and then we will queue up some crossbowmen because we will definitely need more ranged units. So now we'll attack him and first thing you want to do is to summon the Ancient Knight of Enedor, send him first and of course tank the damage because he's really durable. As you can see they also have some serpent obelisks here which are uh, just two towers but they are pretty strong as you can see he's uh, really durable but he's still dying really quickly so you definitely want to destroy those serpent obelisks as fast as you can. But the main priority should still be to kill this Goblin Shaman, of course, because he's definitely the biggest threat here. Uh, I still maintained my items, so I can maybe use the Healing Dust right now and save the Medicine Plant and Water Amulet for the second town. And now I want to destroy those towers, of course, because they are shooting me. They will kill lots of my crossbowmen if I don't destroy them uh, quickly enough. So let's just kill them one by one. And as you can see, this was not like uh, too strong town, but uh, you will still need some army to def uh, defeat this. As you can see here, you can also pick up a wood pile of 120 wood, so that's also really nice. And then you can, of course, build that expansion here. So let's actually remove some units from barracks. So we have some resources. And let's start building immediately. Of course, there is one more serpent obelisk. As you can see, it's like transforming a little bit. But uh, it doesn't really matter. I just need to destroy it and that's it. As you can see they have some new units here, so let's just kill them and destroy the goblin hut. And I can immediately start building my expansion here. Yeah, we also want to make one new peasant. And start making some more crossbowmen. Even though I lost all of my melee units, so we'll definitely need to work on that as well. Uh, there will be of course some more units, uh, some more attacks coming from the second town, so I need to make sure that they don't go around my army. Yeah, here I can spot them with my town hall, but this area they might just slip through. So I will just stand on this position and uh, hopefully catch them. And after we defend or repel one more attack, then I will uh, retreat to this healing fountain once again. Then. Once again, and heal my army. As you can see, he's already attacking. I will use my ability again, which is with my unit, so I can tank it with this summoned unit. Yeah, hopefully no units die here. And also after we uh, defeat them, then I can just retreat uh, with my army and send my Ancient Knight of Enedor to explore the enemy town, so I can actually see of what they have there. My steel shall taste your so as you can see they have lots of towers here, three goblin shaman shamans, 
and uh, lots of other units and buildings. So yeah, let's just attack move here. Doesn't really matter. Maybe I could kill one shaman if I was a little bit quicker, but uh, it's still fine. We we'll just need uh, full population, which is uh, 90 in this mission, and then we will just push through. And since they just attacked, I can just uh, retreat for a while and uh, heal my army. Uh, let's utilize both uh, town halls right now to create more peasants, so we can fill up our expansion. And then I will make like uh, two or even three more barracks, because we will have much more resources really soon. And I want to utilize them, so definitely want to build some more barracks for that. Oh, actually this peasant is stuck here, he stopped building those, those farms. So I don't need them right now, because lots of population is, was freed up uh, during that attack, when I lost lots of, en uh, lots of my units. But, of course, I still want to maintain uh, some farms, so we have full population available. So we are creating three more peasants, and right now we have four, so let's just make one more. So we have eight of them here, that should be enough for three gold fields. And again, everything is already fully healed except the hero, so let's just retreat with our army. So if they decide to attack once again, we can just uh, repel it easily. And let's try to make three new barracks. Since we have enough resources for that right now, and I believe there is one more upgrade for uh, crossbowman's armor, so we can also do that. Building complete, my lord. Yeah, we'll eventually run out of gold uh, in our main town here, but uh, and also here, of course. But we should have enough resources to make like uh, two times uh, full population, so definitely shouldn't run out of resources. We should be easily able to uh, defeat our enemy with this. So the Sir Godfrey is already almost fully healed, so I'll just wait for those barracks, then I will spam full population really quickly and uh, just straight up attack them. We also have those items here. And actually that reminds me the opportunity to get even more items here because you can continue this way and there are some more neutral enemies that you can defeat and get some more items. So let's just wait for one more attack from our enemies and uh, once we repel that I will go that way and show you some more some more treasures that you can capture that, uh, capture there. So barracks are finished, uh, let's create some swordsmen's first and after that I will continue some crossbowmen's. Because we'll sti still need like six more to a full group of them. And uh, that should cost 350 gold, so let's just wait for that. And as you can see I'm not even using this gems mine, because I'm not even using the full uh, full potential of uh, the gems mine if my in my main town so as you can see what just with one done? peasant on wood and one on gems we are able to easily uh, easily have enough wood and gems in this mission so it's just all about gold here which we are mining uh, with the maximum potential of course I grow so Sir Godfrey is uh, basically fully healed we need to wait like five more seconds and uh, then I will just move into my army. My steel shall taste Hopefully he won't get too injured in the next attack of our enemies because I really want to continue this way to get some more treasures. Of course you don't need to do that. You can definitely win those missions without any treasures but I'm just showing you those opportunities uh, to get them because it can just make it a little bit easier for you. If you are maybe struggling a little bit, then this is definitely something that will help you. It will be done. So there should be no more upgrades available here. Everything is just done. We just need to make a few more units and then we should be ready to attack. Actually we already have a full group of crossbowmen, so let's not make any more of them. I will just create some more swordsmen, because we will need lots of melee units of course to tank the damage. 
And again, I will utilize my ancient Knight of Anador for that, because that's, uh, that's the most tanky unit that we can have, and also he's basically free. We just need some time to generate mana, and then you can just summon him. And of course, still that free is also really tanky, we can heal him with medicine plant, so we will definitely have uh, enough units in the front. Uh, to give us some time to destroy our enemies with crossbowmen. Uh, we also have one leveled up swordsman here, so he will be giving us an armor aura, that's also really useful. And we also have one leveled up crossbowman, which is giving us a damage aura, so the whole army is much stronger right now. Uh, I also have one more pikeman still from the beginning, but uh, he's not leveled up yet, so we don't have the dexterity aura, but uh, that, that should be fine. Let's just uh, queue up some more swordsmen. I'm still waiting for the enemy attack, but it uh, doesn't seem like he wants to attack me, so I will just attack him first, uh, doesn't really matter. Yeah, this was maybe the army that he was saving up to attack me, but... Uh, he didn't do that, so I will just attack first. Yeah, I will try to tank the damage with the Ancient Knight of Anador here. We can also summon those Varangis here, so I can easily kill those Shamans. And I will just push through him, as you can see. He stands no chance against me, I have much more units and also stronger units. So this should be really easy. Yeah, as you can see, those Serpent Obelisk are really durable, and also they are uh, killing those crossbowmen really quickly. But I have so many of those crossbowmen that uh, he will just stand no chance against this. Let's just focus it uh, even with my melee units, so we can destroy it even faster, and yeah, this should be fine. If I wanted, I could just heal this Ancient Knight to full right now, but uh, he will disappear basically immediately now, so there is no point in that. And Sir Godfrey is not even damaged that much, so uh, that's also fine. So we just need to destroy those last goblin hunts, maybe some last units that will spawn here. And uh, after that we should win the mission. Uh, yeah, once again, as in the first mission, I will show you uh, after we finish the mission, I will actually click continue instead of uh, exit immediately. And uh, I will show you the last treasures that you can also get there that I missed. So let's click continue here. And if you continue this way, you can uh, you can get some more items. So here you have some Varangis that you need to defeat. As you can see, there is quite lots of them. But yeah, we can also summon another Ancient Knight of Anador to help us. And as you can see, we should be able to easily push through here uh, without losing any units. Yeah, you will probably get injured, but you can just heal yourself. And don't go near the water, because there are some serpents that you would need to fight for no reason. You can just ride like this. And here you can pick up uh, Orb Poison. A poison orb, so you can just take it here. And also, actually, I missed one more item here, which is another medicine plant. So right now I have two of them that I can use to fully heal any unit I want. Yeah, so like this, you click My on your hero is and he's full HP. And also we have the orb poison, which is another item that you can use on any it's unit, uh, preferably, of course, your Sir Godfrey, and it will increase the damage uh, by 20. 20 poison damage, so this is really useful. Uh, but keep in mind that yes, if you lose your hero and he gets resurrected here after two minutes, then uh, he will no longer have that uh, effect, of course. That's only for the one certain unit that you have, and if you lose him and he gets resurrected, uh, then he will lose that effect, of course. Yeah, it's like if you put it on a swordsman and then create a new one in the barracks, of course, he won't have that effect. Uh, so those are all the treasures that you can uh, get in this mission. So let's click exit and check the results. Uh, yeah, nothing too interesting in score, buildings and resources. The most important things are units here. So as you can see, uh, the kill ratio is really good. Yeah, we killed like three times uh, what we lost, which is always really nice. Uh, our ally was not even fighting. Yeah, he only had that captain there and uh, two towers. 
So there was not really a chance for him to fight. And then there is our enemy. He actually had largest army, but we produced more units and we also definitely killed uh, much more units than him, than he did. And there is experience gained. Uh, so yeah, this was the second mission. Uh, yeah, it was a little bit more interesting than the first one, I believe. And uh, next time we'll take a look at the third mission uh, that I already teased a little bit in the beginning, that we'll be defending that village in the north. And uh, of course there will be some more swamp goblins that we'll need to fight. And it will just continue the storyline. So yeah, take care guys.